don't pretend podcasting isn't boring. Hello and welcome again to another episode of Juan Aron Talks and Thoughts. Today is very special because it's the first episode of a series that I decided to call uh, Women Thoughts Around the World. You see, uh, wherever I travel, I talk with women about the problems they face every day. But I never uh, record them. So right now I'm uh, staying in Turkey, so the first episodes of this uh, series uh, are going to be focused on Turkey. As you may know, uh, Turkey may uh, withdraw from conventions to prevent violence against women. And this is happening just weeks after the murder of a female student that it was quite uh, impactful in Turkey. So the Council of a Europe Convention on Prevention and Combating Violence Against Women and Domestic Violence, it's better known as the Istanbul Convention because it was signed in Istanbul and Turkey even ratified it in 2012. It is a human rights treaty of the Council of Europe against violence against women and domestic violence. So uh, the first time was signed, it was in May uh, 2011, uh, as I was saying, in Istanbul, in Turkey. And basically the focus is to end uh, the impunity of uh, perpetrators of violence against women. However, this treaty has had uh, several uh, backlashes and, and quite some problems because um, Uh, the convention basically offers uh, like two types of interpretation of gender as biological and, so and a social category. This has uh, created some problems in places or countries such as uh, Bulgaria, where these kind of definitions are not um, considered right, meaning that they only believe that uh, the definition of um, male and female is determined biologically. So, although it's not uh, clear, um, Poland recently said the same, like that they are planning to withdraw from, from um, this kind of uh, agreement, or at least there is speculation about it, for that reason. And I assume that Turkey is the same case. They haven't like stated something, but uh, probably that's the part of the document that they, they don't like. Of course, in Bulgaria, different women's rights groups, uh, they were like very upset about this. Uh, when they uh, take uh, that the decision of not ratify this agreement. And in Turkey recently, there was uh, some women, uh, women protesting um, just for the mere idea or suggestion to withdraw from this uh, convention. So um, in the convention, they define gender in the Article 3rd, uh, Section C, I think that's how it's called, as, as the so, uh, socially constructed roles, behaviors, activities, and attributes that a given society considers appropriate for women and men. So just giving my two cents about this, I consider that this kind of agreement should uh, really be specific and kind of focus on what they are planning instead of trying to stack everything in the same document so they don't have this kind of backlashes because in some countries such as turkey and apparently uh, bulgaria and apparently poland they don't they don't believe in this so we need to check if the majority of the population does not believe th this or only the government or what is going on but in the meantime like a document that's suppo supposed to protect women is uh, being attacked so i think um, there should be a document about the protection of women specifically about that and another document of whatever they want and another document so different specific documents anyway in this series i'm going to talk with a friend of mine since in turkey uh, the violence against women and the government etc is not um You know, sometimes you need to be careful about about talking about the government and the, the society. I'm going to give as uh, less information as uh, possible about them, uh, respecting that uh, they feel safe. So I send these uh, recordings to them until they assure me that they are safe with this and everything is in order. 
and uh, I'm asking questions about uh, how they feel in their in their society. So without further ado, let's just uh, start with the first uh, interview of a series that I plan to continue through the rest of my trips and in Turkey specifically at least two episodes this one's uh, this one and the next one so let's just start okay first of all um, Bahar thank you very much for talking uh, with me Uh, let me just explain you a little bit why <clears throat> I decide to talk about this. So as you know, like uh, when we met in um, uh, Turkey, I had like seen these differences between the like Western uh, women and Oriental women and particularly in Turkey and particularly Muslim. I know that you are not uh, religious. But I would like uh, you to, to tell me your opinion or what do you see in daily basis, uh, particularly here in Turkey, about how women are treated and um, if you think that is good or it's bad or what are your thoughts, thoughts about it? Hola Juan, hola. Thank you for choosing me for expressing my feelings about this topic. First of all, I can say that uh, being a woman in Turkey, it's quite hard. And it's not uh, not about if you are a religious woman or not. It's all about we are a male-dominated society. You need to be careful about your talk. You need to be careful about your wearing and your behaving in this society. And this is so fucking tiring. And another problem for me, this male-dominated society is teaching the men they have a right to talk on women's body and life. And you know this is so unfair. They are feeling so free to tell you how you need to talk, how you need to wear, how you need to live your life. And of course, I don't want to accept it. As I know, we need to be equal, but obviously we are not. So how important is for you like these topics? Um, the thing is that, as you know, I've been traveling uh, through Turkey quite some time now. And there are women that... Um, reject this idea and there are women that accept this idea and they say that is better so on one side like I feel that uh, some people are quite comfortable with this um, and I think it has to do with how much they value freedom um, instead of uh, you know being um, like cuddling being part of, uh, of the family for example Uh, I remember in Gaziantep there was uh, this girl that she was telling me, you know, the thing is that I, I love my family, so I prefer, like, it's okay if these are the rules, but I I want to be with my family. I don't want to um, make them uh, get mad. Yes, I can understand those people because uh, family is one of the most important thing in Turkey. Um, in our culture, obeying the family rules, showing respect to elder family members are quite essential. So this is not easy to stand up to them. So I can understand those people, but if you are asking my opinion, I think your happiness, your freedom is the most important thing. Because if you are not happy, you cannot make happy to the people around you. Um, I am lucky because my family is in the middle. I mean... Uh, they are not so strict, but they are not so free also. So they are showing respect to my preferences. But if they are not, of course, I am going to fight for my feelings, for my thoughts, for my future. Because this is my life. This is not their life. So I'm going to live once, not twice. Have you ever experienced a moment in which somebody uh, talk about you, about the way you dress or what you do or... What are the things that make you um, uncomfortable? Like you were saying that people uh, feel that they have the right to tell you what to do, how to uh, how to dress, um, how to behave. So I don't know if you can share uh, with me one um, experience or something that you can um, put as an example of this. 
problem is that you are feeling this in a respect of the life anytime you can feel it for example if you are wearing a dress or short and if you are walking on the street you can see lots of guys are watching you even the women are watching you with not approval eyes and then you are telling yourself okay next time i'm not going to wear it um this is also controlling you Um, for example, uh, when I was with my friends, actually they are not my own friend, my friend's friend, uh, we were talking about a topic and I was using some bad words for that. And they told me uh, in a funny way, they said, oh, we didn't expect it from you. Like you were looking like a kind girl, but now you are using a bad language. So it's not looking good on you. But of course, it's just happening because I am a woman. And another example I remember so clearly, um, me and my friend, we were in the bank and we were waiting and uh, my friend uh, was wearing a slashed skirt and it was a bit short and a, a, a man came to us and he told me, your friend uh, leg is seen by the others so maybe it's better to cover it. And he was behaving like this is something so normal and he was trying to help us. But I said, no, it's open because she wants to open it. That's all. And yeah, it was so bad moment for us. We felt so, so, so bad. And yeah, we are leaving this situation all the time. Yeah, I, I understand. Um, and definitely I'm I'm in the side of uh, freedom, as you know. Like I prefer people to be free. Um, I just encountered that is... Uh, I, I, I see these kind of differences between like societies in which the individual is the most important, like in uh, United States or Europe and societies like in Turkey where the unity is the family, for example, or like a group of people. And um, I prefer freedom, but um, I understand how it also can be attractive to have the the support of your family in some way i would say but uh, anyway in the um, example that you were mentioning do you see do you see how these guys is kind of like trying to uh, protect you in some way i would i would say maybe because he uh, the way you say it correct me if i'm wrong but the way uh, you say it is that the guy wasn't like upset but he was trying to say like hey maybe you want to 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 cover you up or something like that and i remember in adana a friend was telling me that the respect for women was very high in turkey and he was telling me that if he or any girl walks in the street and somebody says something to her then probably the rest of the people will will beat him up and you know trying to uh, yeah punish him for that is this true how do you feel it uh, what do you think about it yeah i can understand what you mean and the guy is telling the truth but we need to ask ourselves who are the troublemakers who are creating the problems who are disturbing the women the men right and who are trying to protect the women men again so the problem is men not women Actually, I don't want to be protected by any guy because in their mind, women are weak creatures. They are strong, but we are weak. So we are needed to be um, protected by the guys. If you don't have any guy in your life, like your brother, uh, like your father, your boyfriend, your husband, it means you are weak and you need to be protected. So I don't like this mentality. This is the main problem. Okay, for the people that are uh, listening on Instagram TV, it's time to say goodbye. You can follow the conversation on YouTube. Uh, you can check it also on Spotify, uh, Google Podcast, and of course in Anchor. And you can um, check all the uh, links in the description of this episode. So, see you around and let's just continue with the topic. Yeah, I understand that. I understand that. It's, it's interesting because um, I don't know. Like I kind of see uh, 
some sort of problems in both uh, sides. Um, of course, for men and women, um, I think that in countries, for example, in in United Kingdom and stuff, um, particularly in United Kingdom, is what I saw it the most. Um, like people are, since it's such an individualistic society, they feel quite alone and it's very difficult for them but they have like all the freedom you know so um, i don't know if um, it could be something in the middle or you need to choose between freedom and support or something like that freedom and protection it's it's a difficult um, topic i would uh, probably right like to choose uh, which one is better or or if if it's even possible to have both in your case how is the experience for you for example dating or um, is it difficult because you you are very open-minded is it difficult for you because in in europe and in the united states what i've seen is that people start to be a little bit it's a little bit difficult for them dating because they are so independent but i don't know if here the problem is the opposite that you are so um, protected by your family that is difficult to date or it's easier i don't know how, how is dating here the first thing i mean which one is better protected by the family or freedom i think the best answer is being in the middle i mean living a life which is approved by your family and approved by yourself. I know it can be a bit utopic, but yeah, I think this is the best way for living in peace. And the second one, the dating in Turkey, actually this is a changeable thing because it's up to you, it's up to your family, your friends, your environment. The new generation is totally different than past. Uh, for example, one night stand relationships are so common in new generation, but for me this is a bit fake. I prefer more serious and deep relationships. Um, if your partner is not so jealous, you can live in peace, but if the guy is a jealous Turkish guy, it means you are in trouble because they are creating lots of problems, they are making you more isolated and They don't let you go, they don't let you wear what you want, they don't let you talk with the other guys and in time you are getting uh, like him, you are getting more jealous and you are doing the same to him so there is no more happiness in your relationship. And what about families? Some families are accepting the situation and they are letting you go out, have fun with your boyfriend, maybe live with your boyfriend but not all of them of course and some families are caring about his uh, political ideas he, if he is religious or not some families are taking care of this kind of things so it's up to your family uh, but for me if you are with a guy who can understand you and who who is respecting you this is so important i think respect is more important than love And then it means you are in a healthy relationship and you can be happy with that guy and yeah it should be like that for me Bahar in my Instagram somebody asked me to ask you if it is common in Turkey for men to have relationships outside of the marriage um, And you can like elaborate on it like one like before they get married I would say and the other one like well to cheat on their on their wives I would say actually it's a bit hard question because it's changing according to the guy's background uh, life experiences family and culture and age uh, so I cannot say that this is so common or not but of course I have seen lots of situation like that But I can say that uh, the guys who get married at an early age, uh, they tend to do this mostly. Because I think um, they are not choosing their wives on their own, but mostly their families are giving the opinion to them. So in time they are realizing they are not so good matching. 
so they start to cheat their wives but when it comes to girlfriend i mean before marriage i think th this is more common because uh, marriage is something serious i mean a serious commitment in turkey of course this is not something so big because people can't cheat each other after marriage but before marriage i think this is uh more than usual yeah but yeah this is the it, it depends on how how much happy they are in their relationship and you know how much they are matching each other but of course i cannot say that this is something normal in turkey of course this is not normal and do you think that the girls that uh, have relationships before they get married um like society judge them like with like less valuable or they have some sort of uh, discrimination or stigma um as turkey i think we are in the middle of the situation because uh west of turkey and east of turkey the new generation and old generation we are totally different from each other so i cannot generalize the situation for whole turkey but i can say that Uh, for me and for my environment, for example, uh, having a boyfriend before marriage is something normal because this is a way of uh, discovering yourself. But for some environments, of course, this is still something a big issue and in this way you are losing your value as a woman and this is so bad, of course. But uh, when it comes to sexual things before marriage for women, I think this is still a big uh, trauma and a big problem for most of the country. Uh, yeah, maybe some people don't agree with me, I'm not sure, but uh, most of the women are facing this problem still today in Turkey. And finally, uh, Bahar, one last question. Uh, when I was in Batman, um, which is more like a Kurdish area in Turkey, uh, I came across... For this word called uh, tore uh, which is of course you know but for the people that don't know it's kind of these um, crimes like honor crimes and stuff like that and some people told me that in um, batman and these areas like this happen very often i don't know batman but in, in the little towns around it and uh, that they ha they happen often and they are not even reported um, What do you think about this idea of like uh, honor crimes? They still happening? Uh, I mean, as you mentioned, you are kind of in the middle because you're very close to the um, east part of Turkey. So I would love to hear um, that from you. Um, I can say that in my real life, I have never seen such a situation, but uh, all the people in Turkey can say that. Uh, we have seen this so many times on TV series, on TV and on news because unfortunately it's a reality of Turkey but it's happening mostly in Kurdish families, not in Turkish families so it means it's mostly happening in a west, not west, but east part of Turkey but um, this Türe thing is so shitty because it's like in a family the elder member of family can uh, come together and they can decide about your future. If you are doing something against their family rules, if you are disrespectful for them, if you are not obeying them, they can judge you, they can punish you, even they can say, okay, let's kill him or her. And the killer most probably will be a member of family. So this is something so scary actually and so bad. But I think it was a bit more common in the past than today. Maybe it's my expectation because we don't know the real numbers. But yeah, I think and I hope it was more common in the past than today. Well, um, thank you very much for your answers, um, Bahar. And if you have anything else to add, uh, I'm glad to hear it. Um, it's very interesting for me and for many people, even... Even just crossing the border from Turkey, not many people know what is going on. Um, you know, besides Bulgaria, if you go a little bit far, far uh, farther from there, not many people know. So, yeah, thank you very much, and 
Yeah, let's just keep talking. Juan, it was a great conversation for me. I had so much fun and it was also interesting for me because I haven't thought about these kind of questions before, but <laughs> even the situation is not so brilliant in Turkey right now. I am hopeful for our future and I really believe in women power. So, yeah, thank you again. Gracias, mi amigo. Take care, bye-bye. <laughs> Okay, I hope uh, you enjoyed the interview. Uh, both of my interviews so far, uh, they are magnificent people. They are just super smart, super talented, super creative. But I'm trying to be uh, not be very specific, just to just to make sure that they are safe and they don't they are not in any type of uh, danger, you know. So I think it's time to say uh, goodbye. I'm trying to keep this as short as possible, so you can, you know, I don't know. I just did a, a poll on um, Instagram and many people told me that they prefer uh, small uh, episodes with uh, topics divided by interviews as I'm going to do uh, in this series which I love to talk with other people because I'm sick of to uh, talking only uh, with myself so remember that I have a webpage uh, juanaround.art.blog where you can uh, check information about traveling and also about nomad journalism and other kind of topics that I'm, uh, I have been working doing articles and opinion uh, pieces. If you are listening um, this, you can watch it on YouTube. And if you're watching it on YouTube, uh, remember that you can listen it on Spotify, Google Podcasts and Anchor. Uh, you can find me on uh, Facebook, Instagram and Twitter as Juan Around. And if you love my content, you can support me in my Patreon, um, www.patreon.com Juan Around. Or you can buy me a coffee in uh, www.buymeacoffee.com So my friends, it has been a pleasure. I hope uh, you, um, you know, follow, like, share, subscribe and all that stuff and that you are interested of these topics and just reach me out if you want me to talk about a anything in particular or if you have any kind of question okay see you around <laughs>